Hello, Fit.Live viewers, how are you? Let's get y'all set up, hello. Thank you guys for joining, how's that look? Good, thanks for the hearts. Okay, cool, let me make sure that I can see my whole body here while we're all getting on. Okay, perfect, hopefully you can hear me too. I'm getting the mic situation figured out, so that's it's coming. Hey, thanks for joining. How are you? We're listening to music by my friend DJ Taz. Oh, good and awesome. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. I know it's morning where some of you are, maybe afternoon, maybe evening. There was someone uh, catching my meditations in Australia, and that was at 10.15, but that's 7.15 my time. So, hello. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining. So, it's so awesome to have everybody joining at all these different times from all different places around the world. It's so great to get this community together. So I hope you guys are ready, hello, to do some yoga today. Hello, and if you joined me on Monday, then that's good because you'll have a little idea of where we're going to go today. Um, and in these, on Mondays I'm teaching the basic vinyasa and it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the same class as today, but today it's gonna to be more challenging. So <clears throat> what I tell all my students, um, you know, in person or uh, virtual, hey, it didn't go off, all right. I put, it seemed like, my, like it was gonna mess up. There was a call coming through, but I blocked my calls. Okay, so anyway, as I tell all of my students, please only do things that feel good. You don't wanna do anything that causes pain. It's okay to like feel sensation and you can go up towards your limits, but don't ever go past your limits. Okay, so that's really up to you to stay safe, even if we might be doing a little bit more challenging poses today. And don't let it discourage you that you can't do um, the more challenging poses, okay? Yeah, thanks for joining. Because that's not really the, the goal. The goal is to feel sensation and get some um, benefits from the pose. You're not gonna like reach enlightenment because you can put your leg behind your head or something. No light bulb's gonna go off or, or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are ready, hey AJ, um, to do some yoga. So we'll begin first just with some breathing. So find your comfortable seat, you can cross your legs, pull the flesh away from the sitting bone. So in the beginning of the practice, we always wanna make sure, yeah, I'm gonna lead you through the, through the class. Um, so then you can watch some of it now and maybe do, do it later. Um, so we always wanna begin the class kind of tuning out from every, all the distractions, everything that's going on around us and start to turn our gaze inward. Okay, so you can, let's do joy mudra. Um, Hansi Mudra. So bring all of the tips of the fingers together except for the pinky and then open your palms and turn um, and place the backs of the hands down onto the knees. Shoulders are back and down slightly. Draw your lower belly in and up and letting the ribs and chest expand. Thank you guys for the hearts. So we're really trying to bring the breath up and we'll begin with some of Riti breathing. Equal inhale, equal exhale. So let's inhale for four. And exhale for four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Keep going on your own. Focusing on drawing the breath up. Keeping your eyes closed. Your purpose is joy. Your purpose has nothing to do with how you make a living. That is your vocation, mission, or inspired passion all worthy, but your purpose is much simpler and bigger. Your purpose is joy. It's about discovering, nurturing, and celebrating who you truly are, and knowing and loving yourself at the deepest level. So let that sink in. Just think about how that relates to you and your life at this time.
trying to really get connected to that breath because we want to keep our breathing just like that throughout our whole practice, inhaling to about the count of four, exhaling to four. Well, we'll keep our breath like this during our active portion of the practice. Circle your hands together in front of your heart into prayer. Let's set that intention with one ohm. So take a deep breath in. And then bow your head, blink your eyes open, and then lift your head. All right, and I'm going to make my way over to the mat. So we're focusing on joy today. We'll be working on hamstrings and hips.
and down dog, or we'll practice our donkey kick. So you walk your feet in a couple inches, big toes touch. Bend your knees, look past your hands at the end of your exhale. That's when we'll put the weight into the hands, and then go back to down dog. So they might be little, or they might be a little, they might be bigger, we'll do five. Inhale, bend the knees, exhale, hop. One more. And walk forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Push into the feet. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Arms by your side. Let's breathe here. Tadasana, standing mountain pose. Slow down the heart rate a little bit. Come back to the breath. Probably starting to get warm already. Okay, so now come to, again, the front of your mat. Let's do a balancing pose. Have a strong base in the left foot. Spread the toes apart, grip them down. Bend the left knee, thanks for the heart. And then cross your right leg over. If you need to stand by a wall to do this, that's fine. Start to push your hips back like you're sitting into a chair, making sure that this knee's not jutting forward. Push your hips back. Okay, flexing that ankle, you could do prayer. Hold here, feel that stretch in the hip. Keep your chest coming forward, shoulders back. Keep breathing. If you know Ujjayi breath, you can do that. Today we just went over some bridge breath. Next week, maybe we'll start with Ujjayi. But don't worry about it if you don't know what it is. Now with as much grace and control as you can, push up and release. Walk it out a little bit. Okay, strong base in the right foot. Bend the knee a little bit, cross the left leg over, flex in the ankle, push the knee away. Start to push your hips back. Now the sides might be a lot different, so you might not be going as far on this side as you did on the other side, that's okay. And if you're not going as far as me, that's okay too. It doesn't matter, you just go to where you feel sensation. With as much grace and control as you can, push up, slowly release, and walk it out. Okay, so, like I said, this is the more advanced <laughs> class that I teach during the week. So, we're going to bring it up a little bit. We're going to make sure that we get warm with Surya Namaskar B variation. We'll do Anjane Asana instead of uh, Warrior One. If you don't know what that is, it's all right. Just do your best, okay? Come up to the front of the mat, feet together, standing on our Tadasana. Move down into the feet. Inhale, reach the arms up, sink the hips back, knees back. Exhale, fold, straightening the legs as far as you can. Inhale, halfway up, monkey pose, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, you can walk to plank or jump to chaturanga. But please don't jump to plank. This would be chaturanga. Okay, lower down, inhale, cobra. Chest forward and up. Exhale, hips up and back. Right foot forward, left knee down. It's a lot. Inhale up. Palms touch, exhale, plank, lower down, inhale through cobra, exhale, down dog, left foot forward, right knee down, inhale, arms up, exhale, plank, lower down, inhale, cobra, shoulders down, exhale, hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Adho Mukhishvanasana. Breathe here. Wrap the shoulders. If you're really bendy, see about, try not to come down like this. Start to engage your abs and lift up out of the shoulders a little bit. Keep those shoulders engaged. So if you want to hop forward to the front of your mat, walk your feet in a couple inches. Bring your big toes to touch. Inhale, bend your knees. 
Look forward, exhale, walk or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Push into the feet. Inhale, reach your arms overhead, sink the hips back. Exhale, push into the heels, hands to the heart. Bring your arms by your sides. Take a couple breaths here, begin slowing down the heart rate. Wave the heels, squeeze the quads, pelvis neutral. Find your gazing point, your drishti to help focus your mind. one more time. This time, maybe you'll go a little bit further. Let's have a strong base in the left foot. Spread the toes apart. Cross the right leg over. Sink the hips back into the heart. If possible, if you can, you can bring your elbows down here. You don't have to. Push your hips back so that your knees not jutting forward. Your heels are on the ground. Breathe. Another variation would be to try to bring the fingertips down. Sink down low. to the heart, push up slow, walk it out. Strong base in the right foot, spread the toes, cross the left leg over, push that knee away from you, sink the hips back, keep that ankle locked, okay, so that we're not letting the foot turn in, keep breathing, in and out through your nose. If you try it on the other side, you try bringing the fingertips down, pushing the hips back. Come up with as much control as you can, and walk it out. All right, so we will flow a little bit more, starting to get more into the hips and the hamstrings. If you have blocks, you can grab those. We're at the front of our mat. Weight in the heels. 
squeeze the legs together. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hold. Inhale, halfway up to monkey, hands can be on the shins. Exhale, walk to plank or jump to chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bring the big toes to touch and lift your right leg up. Bend the knee and open the hips, but try to keep equal weight in the hands instead of coming really light onto the right hand. Try to keep the shoulders square. Okay, start to bring your knee towards your nose and place your foot somehow in between your hands. Maybe it lands here and you grab it and bring it through. Okay, bring the back knee down. Get your balance. Come up if you want to fold your mat over under your left knee. That's fine. So hands to the waist, push your right knee forward so the knee's right on top of the ankle, not past. Okay, keep your tailbone lengthened so that the pelvis is neutral. Arms up, wrap the shoulders, so close the armpits, palms together. That's the same action we want to do in down dog with the shoulders, okay? Breathe here, keep lengthening the tailbone, lifting the chest. Shoulders relaxed. Okay, then we'll start to bring the hands down. If you have blocks, this is where they come in handy. Then we'll start to straighten your right leg. It might not go all the way straight. It might stay kind of bent. That's okay. See if you can tip your pelvis forward, lifting your tailbone. Bring your chest forward, shoulders back. Breathe here. Again, if you have blocks, you can just put the blocks under your hands. Bend your right knee, bring both hands inside of the right foot, and walk the right foot over to the right side of the mat. You might need to bring your left knee back a little bit more. Okay, so now you can be on your hands, you can stay here if you're feeling a stretch, or you can start to come down onto your forearms. Just try not to fall off to the side, so you can keep your hips square for now. Knee is pointing in the same direction as the toes. Keep up with your breath. Come back up onto the hands. Back to plank. Inhale, push forward. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Shoulders back and down. Exhale, chest up and curve. Hips up and back. Wrapping the shoulders just like we did in our Anjaneyasana in that low lunge kind of pose. Wrap the shoulders, bring your big toes to touch. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hips. Keeping equal weight in the hands as much as possible. Square off the foot, leg as you inhale. Exhale, bring that foot in between the hands, however you can get it there. Bring the back knee down. Again, you can fold your mat under, under the knee. Stand up tall on the knees. Push your left knee forward so that it's right on top of the ankle, but keep the tailbone lengthened down so that the pelvis is neutral. Arms up, wrap the shoulders, palms together. When you wrap the shoulders, make sure that the shoulders don't reach up towards the ears. Find your gazing point. Breathe. Keep the tailbone lengthening, rib cage lifting. Sajnayasana. Then we'll start to bring our hands down, straightening the left leg to where we can. Again, if you have blocks, place your hands on the block. Otherwise, you probably want to keep your knee bent, unless your hamstrings are pretty open. And then tip your pelvis forward, so instead of letting the tailbone tuck under, lift the tailbone. Start to bring your chest towards your big toe. Shoulders back. Breathe here. If you can't breathe in a pose, that's a good sign to back out of it. This is half splits or Arda Hanumanasana. Bend the knee, bring both hands inside the foot, 
Walk the left foot over to the left and maybe bring your right knee back a little bit more. Coming onto the forearms if you need to to feel sensation. Keeping the hips as square as possible instead of falling off to the side. Breathe here. Push forward. I'm going to lower my knees because I'm getting tired. Exhale down. 
Uncurl the toes, inhale, cobra. Exhale, hips up and back. Breathing here, wrapping the shoulders. That arm balance is called Ekapata Kundinasana 2. Bend your knees as you inhale. Exhale, step or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine again. Now let's see, separate the feet about one or two inches. See if you can lift the, the feet up. Place the palms under the soles of the feet. On your inhale, lengthen. Exhale, soften. Letting the upper body hang. This is a good stretch for the wrist. It releases the wrist.
Inhale, start to straighten the legs, squeeze the quad. Exhale, reach that left hand up, and then down, right arm up. Breathe here, you can come down or sideways or up. Try to get your side as straight as you can. And I'm just kind of letting my arm hang, but I'm keeping my abdominals and my obliques engaged. Root down through your big toe knuckle. Inhale, come up. Exhale, reach that top arm over. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, let the arms float down. Turn your left foot in. Okay, let's do a wide leg forward fold. So keep your legs like this, but make sure that the outside edges of your feet are parallel to each other so we're not having the heels in. If anything, you turn the toes in a little bit. And that'll create a lot of um, space for your sacrum and it'll broaden the, the low back and the sacrum. I'll just turn sideways so you can see. Hands to the waist. Inhale, do a big shoulder roll, lift your chest. Exhale, fold. Hands can come to the ground or shin. Inhale, monkey pose. Chest forward. Exhale, fold. Hands to the ground. Let the head hang loose. Keep the shoulders engaged. And breathe here. If your head easily touches the ground, take a shorter stance. We want to try to have a straight back eventually. Letting your spine hang or feel like it's pouring out from your hips. If you have those blocks, and maybe you're hanging to here, put your hands on the blocks. Maybe just really try to tip the pelvis forward wherever you are. It's called Padatana. Forward folds are relaxing. As long as you're comfortable, they're good to do at the end of your practice, too to help kind of bring you back in. Thank you for the hearts. And then slowly come back up. Notice how that made you maybe a little bit more calm. Inhale, monkey pose, chest forward. Exhale, hands to your waist, ground down into your feet. Inhale, come up with a flat back. Exhale, heel toe your feet towards each other. Coming to the front of your mat. Stand into that now. Weight in the heels, lower belly, slightly in and up. Find your gazing point. Breathing in as far as you can go. And let your exhale be longer. Be some of your breath. Pigeon toe the feet, 
Okay, we don't want to burn the candle always at both, at both ends. That's what we're using yoga for, at least I hope so. That's what I'd like you to use yoga for, is to help you find balance. So make sure that you really get into these poses at the end and let yourself relax into these and enjoy these just as much as the physical poses, the physically demanding poses. One more breath here. Slowly start to come up. Extend the legs out again. And rock them from side to side. Does anybody have any questions? If you do, go ahead and pop them up there. If you don't, just go ahead and lay down onto your back. So we're towards the end of our practice today. If you're just now catching it, then make sure that you do it later. It'll be about an hour practice, so just save an hour. Okay, so for those of you that have been practicing and are laying on your backs, we'll finish off with a twist and maybe happy baby, all right? All right, so laying onto our backs. Knees bend with the feet on the floor. Bring your arms out into your sides in a T with your palms facing up. Lift your hips off the ground and shift your hips over to the left. So shift your hips away from me. That might be to your right, I'm not sure. Shift your hips away. And then let your knees fall towards me. See if you can keep the shoulder. So my knees are, the knees are pointing towards me. Keep your opposite shoulder onto the ground. You can let your head face up, or you can look away from your knees. With each exhale, just try to soften and relax. Any tension that's found itself or wound itself around your spine or your back, let it go. Inhaling deeply and exhaling just as far as you possibly can. Getting rid of any last bits of tension or stress. Should be feeling pretty good after the practice today. As long as you didn't push yourself past your limits. Okay, that's the key. Bring your knees and hips and head to center. Now shift your hips towards me. Knees go away from me. Keep your opposite shoulder down. You can look up or away from the knees. Nice deep breaths. You can even exhale through the mouth just to make sure you're really releasing.
between the heads, knees, did I say heads? I'm pretty relaxed too. Bring the head and the knees and the hips to center. Now start to bring the knees in towards the chest and just rock a little bit from side to side, massaging your back and your spine. Let's finish off with happy baby before Shavasana. So you'll start to bend your knees and have the feet like they're flat on the ceiling, okay? And let's bring the elbows to the insides of the knees and then see if you can grab the outside edges of the feet. Now see how my hips rolled up? Okay, so after you grab the outside edges of the feet, try to lengthen your spine and your tailbone back onto the mat. I'm pulling my knees down towards my armpits. I'm not letting the legs fall out. Try to keep the knees towards 90 degrees. Again, if your tailbone's rolling up, lengthen your tailbone down onto the ground. Put her off a little bit from side to side. You can always do this pose one leg at a time as well, if both legs are a little bit too much. And we made it. We made it to Shavasana. Please don't skip this part. It's the most important part of your practice, okay? In Shavasana, we're letting everything that we just did during this last almost hour absorb into our bodies, our minds, our spirits, okay? So we really want to get the full effects of the poses. We don't just want to be like, all right, peace, see ya. Let's chill out for a minute and let everything sink in, okay? So extend your legs out. If you have an eye pillow, you can put that on. Bring your feet a little bit wider than the mat. Let the feet fall out to the sides. Arms a little bit wider than the mat. Palms facing up, shoulders away from the ears. Make sure your chin isn't jutting out. Draw the chin back a little bit. You just want to have a natural curve in your neck. Close your eyes. Take a couple cleansing breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Maybe even your side. One more. Ground, carry your body weight. Let everything go. back to the present moment. If you have more time, feel free to stay here in Shavasana. Bring some movement back to your fingers and toes, your ankles and wrists. And reach your arms overhead, arch your back a little bit. Full body stretch. Fingers in one direction, toes in the other. And start to bend your knees and roll onto your right hand side using your right arm for a pillow.
Taking a couple breaths here. Push yourself up to seated. Let your head be the last thing to come up. Crossing your legs. Put your non-dominant leg in front. Pull the flesh away from your sitting bones. Joy mudra. Tips of the fingers together except for the pinky. And breathe here. Lower, lower belly slightly in and up. The ribs and chest expand. Compare how you're breathing now to how you were breathing when you first sat down on your mat with me today. Compare how your body is feeling, your mind, your emotions, your outlook. You weren't on my meditation. Unless you fill yourself up first, you have nothing to give anybody. Therefore, it is imperative that you tend to you first. Attend to your joy first. People are responsible for their own joy. When you tend to your joy and do what makes you feel good, you are a joy to be around and you are a shining example to every child and every person in your life. When you are feeling joy, you don't even have to think about giving. It is a natural overflow by Rhonda Byrne. So just let that sink in. Circle your hands together in front of your heart to prayer. Anjali Mudra. Take a moment to bring that feeling of joy and gratitude into your heart. Gratitude for your practice. Let's show that gratitude for our practice and close our time together just for today with one own. Take a deep breath in. Uh... And then you can bow, bringing your thumbs from your heart up to your forehead. Acknowledging the energy that's within you, around you, connects us all together and never goes away. That energy within me acknowledges the energy within each and every one of you. And I thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste. And you can open your eyes. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know if you have any questions, um, and make sure to, to connect with me somewhere. Yay! Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Again, I'm Crystal Gray. I'm the Yogi Pharmacist, and I'll be on Fit.Live every Monday and Wednesday for meditation and yoga. Mondays is more uh, basic. I'll get into alignment a little bit more. Wednesdays, like today, a little bit more challenging. All right. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you next week on your mats. Namaste.